Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And you may have seen today is the 31st of May, 2023. You may have seen the newest news article saying that A-Rod or Alex Rodriguez has declared that he has early stage gum disease. And I was like, okay, and he's 47. That's kind of normal. <laughs> I would say that's quite, I, I mean, I, I would say it's more normal than abnormal. And I mean, so do most people in their 40s and 50s. But anyways, I mean, that's nice that he's creating awareness about it. He didn't say what kind he has or why he has it. So I wanted to dig into that a little bit more and maybe talk about the relationship to orthodontics. Um, for the most part, my channel, if you're new to it, is meant more for doctors. So most doctors are going to know this. Um, but I'm not a periodontist. I'm an orthodontist. So that means I was a dentist first, a regular dentist, you know, which you know, you're trained on all different types of dentistry. And then I specialized in orthodontics or the movement of teeth and jaws and correction of airways. So I'm not a periodontist. Last time I learned a lot about perio was 20 plus years ago, 25 years ago when I was in school. It's been a little while. So if I say something incorrect and you guys are a periodontist, you're more than welcome to comment in the comment section and correct me. I'm going to do my best to remember this. But basically, periodont um, a tooth is anchored into the bone by um, something called a PDL or a periodontal ligament. It's like a little elastic ligament that makes a tooth a little bit bouncy, you know, and it, a, a tooth is alive. So it has a nerve, it has a blood supply and everything like that. It's a part of your body. So we want to try to keep our teeth uh, healthy and alive, right? And part of doing so is to also keep the support system um, healthy and alive, the bone and the ligaments that are around it. So um, periodontal disease is a disease involving the supporting structures of the tooth, not a disease uh, support about the tooth itself. So about the bone and the ligaments and the attachments of the tooth into the jawbone. So a lot of things can affect how your tooth sits, you know, and how long it lasts and the supporting structure. Of course, the number one thing you guys know about, you know, would be like smoking, um, chewing tobacco, diabetes, and then also just poor oral hygiene in general. If you have poor oral hygiene and you've got plaque on your teeth, you know, the white sticky stuff that you brush off at night and floss off at night um, and hopefully during the day and hopefully at least two to two or three times a day you're doing that. Um, if you leave that sticky stuff on for a prolonged period of time, it is going to secrete acid and the acid can cause cavities, but it also can help to destroy the supporting structure of the tooth and the bone. Um, once you've kind of destroyed that, it's very difficult to get it back and it may not come back. So it's just a little bit more weakened. Um, in addition, the sticky stuff, you know, is something that you can mechanically remove on your own. Um, if you have really, really good oral hygiene, it's less likely that you'll have periodontal disease, but not totally impossible. Uh, you might have less. It can also be a genetic predisposition to periodontal disease. There's definitely a genetic factor. It can be related to medication. It can be related to um, your blood chemistry not being great. You know, high sugars can cause periodontal destruction. Um, drugs and alcohol can definitely do it as well. Definitely smoking, definitely nicotine, definitely vaping. Um, all these things can cause breakdown of the periodontal structures. But also, orthodontic-wise, um, if your bite isn't balanced, if you're hitting in a funny way um, or an unbalanced way, um, we want your teeth to be basically perpendicular to the base of the bone. So, you know, we want it to be like down, not at an angle or anything like that. So if, if your bite isn't quite right and, and the forces aren't going you know, the way they're supposed to be, which is perpendicular, then you can also get breakdown. So that's part of how orthodontics comes into play and why you might need orthodontics to help to not get rid of periodontal disease, but to help to decrease the likelihood of it getting worse is what it comes down to. So you can see here, this is a periodontal probe. This helps to, this is how they measure, you know, but they also use x-rays to measure. Um, obviously a panoramic x-ray is not the gold standard, but it's a nice screening tool. You can see that this patient clearly has, the, the bone should be at the level of the, you know, right about here, you know, and it's way down here. So some of these teeth are going to have, probably have to get pulled out. Sometimes they can do grafting. Sometimes they can 
upright a tooth that might help you know there's a lot of things that are going on here so that is the relationship between periodontal disease or early gum disease and orthodontics and I definitely recommend that if you aren't regularly going to your dentist if they're not regularly measuring your pockets every six months that you're going in if they're not regularly taking x-rays if you have pockets that are greater than three millimeters that's a problem and um, so a lot of times patients come in and they don't want to do the additional treatment that they need but the additional treatment could include also orthodontics as well if you're chronically if you have crowded teeth and you're not able to keep them clean then they're going to get that acid that I talked about or the acid that sits, um, the plaque that sits on there for a prolonged period of time can also turn into tartar or calculus. And that's also not good. And that's the stuff they have to chip off. So that's pretty much how that works. Hopefully that was helpful. Thanks.